Have you ever stared at the prime numbers and thought, I wonder what these would sound like as a giant, insane musical polyrhythm? Well, if so, you're in luck, because we're about to explore the rhythms of the prime. One of the simplest ways of finding prime numbers is called the sieve of Eratosthenes. The basic idea is that you start out with a list of positive integers greater than 1, and then repeat the following process. First, circle the next available number, in this case 2. Then cross out all of its multiples, in this case the even numbers. Then all we do is repeat those steps over and over again. We circle the next available number, which is 3. Then we cross out the multiples of 3. Next, we circle 5 and cross out its multiples, then 7, then 11, and so on and so on. In each case, the circled number is prime, because if it had a divisor other than 1 or itself, it would have been crossed out already. It's a simple, elegant algorithm that results in all the prime numbers being circled and all of the composite numbers being crossed out. Not only that, but if you use a different color for each prime, the colors with which any given composite number is crossed out reveals its prime factorization. For example, 15 is 3 times 5, 34 is 17 times 2, and 36 is made up of only 2s and 3s. Okay, but what does any of this have to do with a giant insane polyrhythm? Well, as a musician, I look at these numbers and I see a series of beats. Within this series of beats, the multiples of each prime form a series of regular accents. For example, here are the multiples of 2. And here are the multiples of 3. And the multiples of 5. If we layer these rhythms on top of each other and speed it up a little, we get a pretty interesting polyrhythm. By the way, did you hear the gaps in this pattern? Well, the first gap appeared on beat 7, since it's a prime number, and therefore not a multiple of 2, 3, or 5. In fact, every prime number after 5 creates a gap in the 2 by 3 by 5 polyrhythm. It's not until beat 49 that we finally get a gap on a composite number, since 49 is 7 times 7, and we're only playing cycles of 2, 3, and 5. So what happens if we start filling in these cracks, taking our cue from Eratosthenes, and adding a new rhythmic cycle every time we reach a gap in the previous cycle? Well, here's a polyrhythm of 2, 3, 5, and 7. Sounds pretty exciting, but let's try again with the cycle of 11 added in. And maybe the cycle of 13. Heck, let's go wild and add in the cycles of 17, 19, 23, and 29. Anyway, you can probably see where this is going. What if we just kept on adding new prime rhythmic cycles going off towards infinity? What would that sound like? One of the problems with infinity is that you do rather tend to run out of percussion sounds. So let's try a different approach and use a single instrument, like the piano, and have the pitch change with each new prime. It's pretty typical in music for the lower parts to move slower, and the higher parts to move faster. So let's try mapping the small prime numbers to high pitches, and have each new prime play at a lower and lower pitch. So far so good, but as we go lower and lower, we don't want to run out of notes and fall off the bottom of the piano keyboard. We need a mapping that doesn't get too low too fast. And I've got just the one. An inverted harmonic series. The basic idea of an inverted harmonic series is that, unlike a harmonic series, where you multiply a given fundamental frequency by bigger and bigger integers, here you divide your starting frequency by bigger and bigger integers. 
As you can hear, the descending intervals get narrower and narrower, which is exactly what we want. So here are the pitches we'll use for the different prime numbers. If they sound a bit unusual, perhaps even out of tune, that's because they fall in between the cracks of the piano keys, just like the notes of the regular harmonic series do. Anyway, I hope you like them. So are you ready for the giant, insane, infinite polyrhythm? Well, here we go. One of the fun things about listening to the prime numbers like this is that you can hear some well-known properties of the primes in the result. For example, it's well known that the primes become less and less dense the higher up you go. In our sonification, each new prime enters as a new lowest note, and you can hear the density of these notes slowly drop off over time. Another thing you can hear is the twin primes, pairs of primes like 11 and 13 that fall on successive odd numbers. Just listen for two accented low notes entering one right after the other. Like these two. Or these two. It's theorized that there are infinitely many twin primes, but this is still unproven. One other thing that the musicians among you may notice is that the rhythm sounds a little bit like it's in 3-4 time. The reason for this is that, aside from the number 3, all prime numbers have a remainder of either 1 or 5 when divided by 6. They can't have a remainder of 0, 2, or 4 because that would mean they are even, and they can't have a remainder of 3 because any number that's 3 more than a multiple of 6 is divisible by 3. Since each prime number is a low accented note, this means that we end up with an accent pattern that reinforces a simple triple meter, like this. Of course, not all the numbers falling on beats 1 or 3 will be prime. But the point is that none of the primes can fall anywhere other than beat 1 or 3 of a perceived 3-4 time signature. What other properties of prime numbers can you hear in the rhythm? I hope it's clear at this point that, though the rhythm itself is built into the structure of the primes, the exact sound of the music depends a lot on how we represent each prime number sonically. For example, we could use a regular ascending harmonic series. Or we could use different scales. Or different tone colors. It's also important to consider tempo and the non-uniformity of human rhythmic perception at different speeds. For example, we're most sensitive to regular pulses around 100 beats per minute. Try to clap along. Pretty easy, right? But what if I slow it down to 15 beats per minute? Try clapping along now. It's a lot harder, because our brains and bodies just aren't built to move at this speed. The effect of this differing sensitivity is that it's fairly hard to perceive the cycles of the larger prime numbers, since they move so slowly. But what if we sped things up a little? Or maybe a lot? Can you hear the cycles of the larger primes come into focus now? Anyway, there are plenty of other ways to map prime rhythmic cycles to music. Each mapping not only offers a different aesthetic quality, but also highlights and makes audible different properties of the prime numbers. What other ways can you think of to turn the prime numbers into music? And what properties of the prime numbers will your mapping reveal? The possibilities, like the prime numbers themselves, are truly endless.